Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Break Talos Principle 2, the only series where 1K's favorite snack is cheese. Get it? Because he likes cheese's puzzles? So anyway, we're here in South 1 today, and this is my personal favorite area. Um, just because when I did my first playthrough of the game, this is the first area where I really went out of my way to try to break as many puzzles as I could, which naturally led to me making this series. And then I also noticed uh, when I was routing this area out that all of the puzzles could actually be solved without using any external things, so just what was in the puzzle itself. So every puzzle today will be solved using only what's within each puzzle individually. Uh, and I'll be also be kind of speeding through them as fast as I can, just because I noticed a lot of them are really quick as well. By the way, I did make a supplemental video to this one where I really do solve all these puzzles as fast as I can. I'm going to put a card up in the top corner of the video where you can click to watch it, or you can just click the link in the description. Uh, go ahead and check it out, because I had a lot of fun making it. So our very first thing we got to do here in number one is to teleport through and get both of these to the other side. We'll just go back for the box, teleport it through, and we want to place it right on the edge of this little flat rock here so that a corner sticks up. And standing on that corner should give us just enough height to put the teleporter up here. Yep, just like that. And there's number one done. Alright, and on to number two next. So for this one, um, we just need to get this teleporter out from around the corner, and that's extremely touchy. So we're going to have to change a couple of options here. First, we're going to want to make our movement speed slow. And we're also going to want to make sure our camera is on the right side of our shoulder. With both of these combined, we should just be able to edge right around the edge here. Nope, too far. Alright, let me reset. It might take a few resets to get this, so I'll uh, meet you over on the other side when I get there. Alright, there we go. I finally got that. So now that we're over here, the next step is to just bring this over and pretty much do the exact same thing in reverse. So we're just going to go ahead and edge around the corner here just enough to be able to put this right on the other side of the cliff. Just like that. Let's uh, change our settings again. Make us move fast again, and we're going to need the camera on the left this time. And we're just going to leave this teleporter right here by the wall. And then our next step is to get this connector here. We're going to connect it there. And then if we go into third person and get very, very, very close to the screen, we can just connect it to that receptacle over there. And if we put it right there, it will connect. Just barely. Somehow doesn't collide with that tree or this wall right there. And then we just got to make a hole in the wall right there. And this one is solved as well. Uh, okay, maybe it is actually colliding with the tree. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, I'm an idiot. Okay, there we go. Alright, there we go. All done. And before we left, I just wanted to show off how you can get items out of this puzzle. Um, if you take this teleporter and put it right up on this cliffside, just like that. Fun fact about these teleporters is, I don't know if it's something with their hitbox or what, but they don't really slide down cliffs, so you can just like put them right up against the edge like that and they're fine. All you gotta do is just uh, teleport out with an item, and there you go. But like I said, we won't be doing that for this area. So next is number three. Alright, 
All right, so there's actually two different solutions I discovered for this one. And the first one is the faster and the simpler one. You just got to take the driller here, and from this corner, you can just barely see the teleporter at the end. So you just teleport there, and bring a teleporter through the hole, and it's solved just like that. However, the next one um, may be more interesting or less interesting than this solution, I'm not sure. Uh, you run over here, and if you jump onto the very corner of this wall, you can get up on top. Oop, I missed it. Let me, uh, this one might take a few resets, just like the last one. So I'll meet you there when I get up. Alright, that one wasn't too hard. I got it, I think, third try. So anyway, now that we're up here, we just gotta run around on top of the rooftops, and we can get to the end. There's three of ten done already. So I will meet you guys. I'm gonna go do the uh, lost puzzle up in the corner here first, so I will meet you there. Alright, so for this one, uh, this was extremely hard to figure out how to cheese, but I think I did technically find a way to cheese it. Um, I looked at some guides. I'll let you know when I get there. Let's uh, just get to that point in the puzzle first. So we're just going to need this fan. We need to teleport up, open up this opening. Plop that there, go down and get our jammer. Head right back up. Okay, so this is the part I think is technically cheese. Uh, you're supposed to have to take this accumulator back through there and get it charged with the laser from somewhere up there and then bring it back down here to unlock it here. However, I realized if you target that and then just drop it right through this hole, it will charge as it falls. And I don't think that's intended. I think you're supposed to have to take it back and charge it from up there. But, uh... Technically cheesed, so good enough for me. All right, next let's head, head uh, eh, let's head on up to number five. This one's gonna be another super fast solve. All we gotta do is jump up on the wall here. All we've gotta do is jump up on the wall here. Almost. Almost had it. Okay, there we go. And we just run around, and this one is solved. And again, you can get all the items out of here just by grabbing that item and jumping up over the wall there, just like that. Alright, let's head on to number six next. Alright, so for number six, all we gotta do is get the cube back into that corner. So we just need to get the teleporter through this little maze here. Alright, and then with the cube in this corner, we've just got to jump up. And once we get up on top of the wall, you can just run right over, just like that. And again, you can get the box out by uh, just getting up on the wall there, and then using the box to jump over there with the teleporter, bringing the teleporter around to here, and then just teleporting out with the box. Uh, so anyway, let's do the next lost puzzle, which is right here around the corner. This one's going to be another super fast solve. All we got to do is teleport up, jump around the corner onto the cliff here, jump onto this edge, and teleport up at the cube. There we go. kind of feel like a speedrunner doing this. Next on our list is number seven. So this one uses a trick that I haven't employed before, and I only discovered when I was routing this area out. So normally when you stack cubes up, they make it literally impossible to jump up on top of the second cube if you don't have anything else with you. Um, if you put them up like this, there's just no way, and there's no way to like stack them up kind of offset so you can use them as a staircase. However, I guess they didn't really think about the fact that you can put them up against the ladder like this. And then if you climb, let me move this back a little bit. There we go. And if you climb the ladder... Oops, had it there for a second. Alright, let me just move them again. That should work. 
So if you climb the ladder, and I'll do this in third person so you can see it better, and then just climb it back, you will land on top of the boxes. And then from there, you can just get up on top of the wall. And then we're going to need to put this kind of on the edge of the ladder up top here so that it... Mm, I don't think that's enough. We need it to kind of hang down at a severe enough angle that we can... That should work. We can get up on this raised edge, and that should be just enough height to get us up on top of the wall. And we just got to drop down and solve it. And let's go on to number eight. That was extremely convoluted. All right, and for this one, we're just going to get the teleporter out. All right, and then we just need to get this over on the other side as well. There we go. And just teleport to the top. And normally we would need to use that connector and try to figure out a way to connect this to that down there. But there's a simpler way to do it, of course. All we've got to do is just like that. And if we don't fail our little jumping puzzle here. One more try. There we go. All done. Now, you may have noticed that we uh, skipped a puzzle. We never did number four, and there is a good reason for that. And that reason is that I lied to you. Um, when I said that we could solve every single puzzle here using just what was inside the puzzle itself, number four, I could not figure out a way to do that. I spent hours just smashing my head against the wall trying to figure it out. There was just no way. So unfortunately, we will need to use some external tools to get number four. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a quick reset here, and then I'll meet you on the other side. Alright, so to break number four, we are going to be using three jammers, which is every jammer in this area. Unfortunately, one of those jammers is going to require three boxes to get out of its puzzle. Um, and we're going to just go ahead and get the first box out of number eight right here. I'm going to put this teleporter up here just in case we fail this jump, because we probably will not get it the first try. Hey, what do you know? We did. Okay, so let's just go ahead and bring this over to number seven, where we will get our second box and our first jammer. And in this puzzle, we're going to be using a trick using that end pedestal that I don't think we've done yet in this series. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get both boxes over here and sacrifice one to get a teleporter. And we'll throw it over here. Oop, get a little closer. There we go. And then um, I'm going to go over and get that jammer as well. All right. So as you know, if you jump on top of a pedestal, uh, it disables jumping. That way you can't like jump over walls. Uh, and even if you put a box on top of here, which can be a little bit of a tricky proposition sometimes, because the game really does not like having boxes on top of these. Alright, so yeah, even with uh, a box on top of the pedestal, you still can't jump up on top of it because you're standing on the pedestal. However, they didn't really think about what happens if you have a teleporter with you, because then you can just put the teleporter on top of the box and teleport to it. And now that we're not on top of the pedestal, we are free to jump as much as we want. So then we can just go ahead and take this teleporter and jump right out of the puzzle. And then we'll just take our items here and teleport right through the entrance screen. And we're going to drop both of them down, and we're going to take that box over to number uh, the lost puzzle over here. Uh, because we do need it to get the other box out of it. And we'll just leave that right there. And then using the same trick we did to break the puzzle, we're just going to get back over to that box again. We're going to drop both it and the teleporter down here. 
And if we put this right over here along this edge as far as we can get it without it falling off, which is about right there. Yeah, I think I trust that. And put the teleporter on top of it and then do the same thing with this box. It'll give us just enough reach to grab that right around the corner like that. And then using the same trick we used in the last puzzle, we can just teleport out with the box. So there's two boxes, plus our third that we had from number eight. And that makes three boxes and one jammer so far. So uh, let's go ahead and bring a box with us and we'll go hit number five on the way and get our second jammer. All right, so getting the jammer out of here is ridiculously simple. We just grab it and we jump right over this wall. And there we go, that's probably the fastest item smuggling I've ever done in the puzzle. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and get all three boxes over to that lost puzzle over there and then we'll get our third jammer out. And with all three boxes here to make a little staircase up to the top of this barrier, all we have to do is get this on the other side of this barrier. Unfortunately, we do have to go the long way around, um, but that's not going to be too much trouble. So we just have to bring this over here. And I do believe we're going to need that uh, fan blade as well, so let me go grab that real quick. All right, and bring our teleporter back over here. Let's just go ahead and drop this through the grate right there. And unfortunately, um, I don't know why this was designed this way, but instead of using a blue barrier for these, it uses these like old iron gates, whatever you want to call these. Uh, and these do not stay down when you've solved the puzzle. So we are going to have to unlock them again, but that is going to be pretty simple using the same method we did when we originally broke the puzzle. There we go. Now we can bring this right over to the entrance. And we just got to reach over here and grab it. Okay, and with all three jammers out of their puzzles, let's go ahead and assemble them in their final location up on the cliff side over here, overlooking puzzle number four. And with all the jammers assembled right here, um, we're just going to jam number four, number three, and number two inside that puzzle, which will leave us only with number one to jam, or uh, open from the inside, which will be very simple. Alright, so that should be all three of those jammed there. So just go ahead and run on in, and we'll use this connector here to open the very first gate, and then just waltz right on through to the end. There's uh, just a little bit of revenge for not allowing me to break it from inside the puzzle here. Alright, so with all of this done, um, before we do the sparks and the easter eggs, I just wanted to show off uh, another cool little trick I found in here. So that point right up there, the, what I have determined to be the highest point in the level, we can get up to it. And we're going to use this lost puzzle over here as our uh, jumping off point to start our ascent. 
The only thing we need to do is get one of the boxes into the puzzle, uh, which should be pretty simple. Actually thinking about it. Um, do I... Yeah, let me go ahead and reset right here just so I can get the uh, teleporter back over there because we're going to need it there. Alright, so with that reset, all we need to do is get a box, and I think I'm going to get it from number four right here, just because it's the closest one, and also that way I can show you guys how you can get items out of it. Really, any puzzle that has both a teleporter and a box in it like this one does, it's very easy to get all the items out, because as long as the end pedestal is close enough to a wall or something you can jump over, you can just get the teleporter out and then just teleport all the items out. And that's exactly what we will be doing here. We just need to finagle this box onto the pedestal. There we go. And teleport on top of the box. Grab the teleporter and jump around the walls to get out. Then if we wanted any of the other items out of the puzzle as well, it would be very simple to just run them over and teleport them through. Alright, so let's go back to that other puzzle. And the simplest way to get items into this puzzle uh, is using this tree right here in the back side. And if you put a box right there, you can kind of jump up onto this little branch right there. Then you can just jump right over the wall. And we're just going to bring our box up here, and we're going to use it to get up on top of the wall there. And we will be bringing our teleporter with us for reasons that will become apparent in just a minute. So we're going to leave that right there and hope it doesn't fall off the wall. And just jump right over. Then we just have to uh, climb this first cliff face here. Let's go ahead and use third person. We just need to jump to... come on, there we go. That rock and get up here. Just like that. Yeah, see this hole right here? Uh, that's bait. Don't jump in there, you will not get out. I learned that many times while trying to figure out how to get up here. And right up in this corner here, we can climb up and do a little bit of a wall run to get up to the next level. And we're gonna put our teleporter down right on top of this slab and go down and get our box. All right, so we're just gonna grab the box and we can teleport up no, we can't. Oh, yeah. Um, so teleporters are a little weird. Uh, there's only two requirements to teleport to a teleporter, and that is number one, you have to be within the bounds of the puzzle that it came out of. And number two, you have to have entered that puzzle legally. And uh, last time we jumped over the wall, so that teleporter did not get activated, but now it is, and now we can teleport up to it. Uh, yeah, so teleporters are kind of interesting in that regard. It doesn't matter where the teleporter itself is. It does not need to be within the puzzle. As long as you are within the puzzle and you entered it correctly, then you can use it. And the reverse is not true. If this teleporter were down in that puzzle, I would not be able to stand here and teleport to it. Uh, because I am no longer within the bounds of the puzzle. So they, they kind of work like the clones in North 1, if you remember those. Uh, they have some kind of weird rules about where you can be when you activate them. So anyway, we're just going to bring this box over here and we will ascend the... Second of three main ascents, I guess you'd call them. We just need to put it right in this corner and jump up on it before it slides down. Just like that. And then we can jump around. Nope, we'll fail. Okay, one more try. There we go. And then we can jump up right here. No. Third time's a charm. There we go. Okay. And from here, we already do have quite a decent view, uh, but we can do better. So we're just going to run around the back side of this little mountain right here. Oh, and if you ever wanted to know what it looks like outside of the play area, it's just kind of flat and empty. And uh, if you go too far, the ground stops having collision, and you'll just fall through it and die. So that's fun. So anyway, we're just going to come right up here, where we will find our third ascent. 
first time I did this, it took me like two hours to figure out how to get up here. But now that I know the route, you can do it in like three minutes. So we're just going to jump up this ridge. And there we go. And then next, we just need to jump over to that rock right there. This really is a lot less disorienting in third person. Okay. So we're just going to need to jump around this rock right here. And you can see there's some land right there on the other side. And that's what we're going to grab onto. Mm, we failed that time. Let's try it one more time. And just like that, and there we go. Now if we just walk over here to the cliff edge, we will have quite a nice view of the whole play area. And this is, as far as I can tell, the highest natural point within this area. There might be one way out there. I don't know if... They, I think that's down. I don't think that's higher than we are. Obviously the tower itself is higher, but I don't know how to get up there. I have figured out a way to get onto these little, like, fins right around the corner, um, using boxes to get over the dangerous water over there. But I just decided to show this off in this video. Of course, once you're this high, there's really only one thing left to do, and that's to uh, dive all the way down into that water down there. And we'll go ahead and get our sparks and Easter eggs. So our very first spark is going to be right over there under that archway. So I will meet you down there. Alright, so here's our first spark. This is right between puzzle 1 and puzzle 2. And our next spark is going to be over between puzzle number 7 and 8, so I will meet you over there. And this one is right up on top of that rock, you can see it there. How do I want to get up there? Maybe this way? Yeah, this should work. There we go. Alright, and then as far as Easter eggs, our first Easter egg is going to be up behind puzzle number seven. And to get this one, we're just going to go into photo mode in the very back of the puzzle over here. There is a way to get to it physically um, by just jumping back onto the roof like we did before, but I'm not really going to spend the time doing that, so... Just go ahead and grab our camera here. And if we follow it over here, we will find a skull. This is from a clear enemy in uh, Serious Sam. I'll probably pop up a picture of one on the screen right now. They're kind of like these weird, like, hoofed skeleton things. Alright, so with that out of the way, our next Easter egg is going to be over behind a lost puzzle here. And actually, for these ones, the next three, I think I'm going to get out of bounds. Uh, there's a spot you can get out of bounds right up over here back next to number six. Hello, you coot. Uh, and that way I can throw off, show off three Easter eggs all at once. So in this little corner right here, if you hop up, you can get out of bounds. And our first Easter egg is right here, and it's like a little cool tree, little cool plant thing. And our next Easter egg is right over here. Surprisingly, we actually can reach this one in person because usually these are only visible in photo mode. It is, of course, the kitty face. And it's right up here on top of the lost puzzle. And it's right on this little cliff face right there. And then the third easter egg we can get to from Out of Bounds. You actually don't have to go Out of Bounds to get to this one, but it's a lot easier if you do. It's right around this corner. It's over by the water uh, on the other side. And it's a cannon. And what'll happen when we fire it? Well, let's find out. Heh <laughs> 
Okay. So I'm wondering, do I want to reset? Yeah, let's go ahead and reset. That should put us back at the lost puzzle over there, which is a little bit of a shortcut to the next Easter eggs. Oh, no, I forgot we went into seven. Okay, I just need to run over to the other side again real quick. And then this next Easter egg, it's right here on the, num the side of number four. And we've actually run past it a few times. You may have actually seen it if you pause at just the right spot. It's just a little sandcastle here. It is designed similarly to a cathedral in Sirius Sam, the second encounter, I believe, at the end of the game. So uh, there's that. And then our, not our last two, but two more Easter eggs are going to be right over here uh, behind the lost puzzle. And they're both going to be visible from right here. So the first one in photo mode, if we come down behind this wall right here, you will find a QR code. And I'll uh, leave it as a little Easter egg of my own to let you guys uh, decode it and figure out what it says. And then the next one, let me just make this camera faster. It is right over here in this cliff face where we will find a second clear skull. Just like the first one. And that was a really loud truck outside my window. <laughs> no idea how that's going to sound on the recording. So anyway. Only two more Easter eggs to go. Next one is going to be out in number two, way over there. So I'll meet you guys over there. All right, and if we go right over here against this left wall and jump down, we can land on this little bit of land. Almost didn't make it. And there's three seashells here, and there's, like, hands on it. I don't know what that texture is from. Yeah, I'm not sure, but, uh, just three shells here. A little bit of a weird Easter egg, but I guess that's that. And then our last Easter egg. I don't think there's any way off of this. I think we have to reset. Our last Easter egg is going to be on the back side of that tower there. So uh, let's go ahead and solve the Tetromino Bridge and get over there. And right on the back side, I wonder if I can just do this with the camera. That way I don't have to get all the way back here. And no, you can't. Okay. So right on the back side here is a hologram of a bunch of people dancing. Alright, so give me a minute to just run back around. We'll do the tower. Uh, we'll leave the area. We'll head to the next area and do the outro. Alright, and here we are in South 2. Uh, I don't remember the name of it, and I'm not going to look it up. Uh, so this is where we will be introduced to the anti-gravity panels and the grav shifter for the first time. Um, as always, thank you for watching if you've gotten this far in the series so far. Uh, if you have anything to say whatsoever, please leave a comment. I love reading them, and I do take that feedback into account for later episodes. So uh, join us next time as we do South 2. Peace! So, tools in this game like to snap to each other. Uh, for example, the grav shifter beam and the driller hole like to align themselves so that the beam can go through the hole easily. There's one little problem with that. The uh, driller is more interested in staying aligned with the grav beam than it is with obeying physics.